Hey guys, so we're gonna make something like this and essentially you need to be in Blender 2.82 um, for right now it's still in experimental mode but uh, this uh, works so what it essentially is we can inflate any object that we want I think it works the best with closed objects because it um, essentially it just animates a yeah the pressure inside a closed object so you can fill it with air or get air out like a vacuum so you can just essentially blow up or deflate any object that you want. Um, let's get in here and we're gonna add a modifier. It's gonna be the cloth modifier and we'll end up here in our physics properties. And well, you know what the uh, cloth modifier does. I'm not going over all of these steps, but essentially when you play it just falls down because we have no collision at all. So let's also add a plane. I'm gonna scale it a little bit up, uh, move it down one unit. And if you play it now, uh, it will still fall through because this plane has no collision. Select the plane, stay in physics properties and add a collision. And what you can see now is that if you play it, it will lay on top. Um, at this point, the cube does not have enough subdivisions to really show us any um, like cloth simulation. So we're going into top and I'm just going to give it some subdivisions. And here you can already see that it, uh, yeah, it changes quite well. And yeah, the way the cloth, like the way the cube bends and just the, how the cloth works is essentially has to do with all these, uh, like the stiffness, you can change the damping. I'm not going into that today, but yeah, that, is, that just um, shows us how the cloth will work, okay? And uh, what we do have here though is something very cool. It is in uh, physical properties and it's called pressure. So now we build pressure inside this uh, model. So inside this cloth. And you can uh, set this pressure to uh, zero, one, even in a minus. So minus will be more like a vacuum. And when you play it, you can see that um, at zero, it just uh, works like a normal cloth uh, simulator, but you can put the pressure up. And um, well, this pressure makes it uh, bounce up as well, but it's just all the pressure inside this balloon or inside this cube uh, will be pushed up. So it's all like air inside and um, that is how you play with that. And if you go lower, it's kind of like, like a vacuum. It will suck out all the air out. Okay, so zero will be our normal value and you can animate this. So if you just uh, right click, you can give this a certain amount of keyframes that you want. Um, we do have this pressure. You can also put a custom volume in here. So at zero, it will just stay the same. And um, yeah, you have a target volume. And oh, don't, you, ha you have to be a little bit careful with these, like with these values. Let's put the pressure to one. Maybe that gives us a little bit more control. Yes. Okay. So it is still a little bit uh, experimental, of course, but you can change uh, like the target volume here. And you also have a factor, which is this scaling it up. Okay, so um, it also works with just the pressure. You can scale it up or down, it's just like a kind of a multiplier. And you can exclude or include certain vertex groups. Okay, so that's essentially just um, what this new option does. So you can inflate and deflate everything. For the people that are interested, I'm gonna make a pool float, uh, just like you saw in the thumbnail. Um, it's gonna make it be a little bit simpler without the head, but um, I'm gonna go over all the steps how to make it anyways. So, okay, so let's just add a new file. Here we go and add a torus. With this torus, I essentially just want to duplicate these major segments and the minor just because I want some more vertices in here. And then the minor radius, I want also to be a little bit up. So I'm just gonna do 0.3. Okay. And now I'm gonna give it a shade smooth. Let's go to our side view, wireframe, and we're just gonna select from here, these middle two edge loops. So you can see that I selected the middle one and the outer one. Ctrl E, mark seam, select everything, U and unwrap. So what I did there is just, I uh, UV unwrapped this. If you go here, you can actually see it in the UV editor that I have UV unwrapped this kind of donut. And why do we do this? Well, I think I want to bake our normal uh, on top of here. So first we need to add some details. And the way I want to do that is I'm gonna do it with sculpting. So I'm gonna add a modifier 
go here and um, add a multi resolution. This works very well with uh, sculpts, so I'm going to just subdivide a few times. I have not looked into Blender's new sculpting mode yet, and I think there are way better options already. But this is just a simple option which uh, also works in uh, older versions. So let's go here and we can change this to sculpt. You can also go to the sculpt section. Um, I'm going to stay in the layout right now and just change this to sculpt. And you can see that we can draw on top of this uh, torus. So there is a new brush which I can see, which is a draw sharp. And it is actually quite sharp. And I remember because the other one that we had, where is it? Crease. It just didn't really work the way that a lot of people wanted it to work. And I totally get that. And what I rather would have is, so let's do draw sharp. And you kind of want to play around with the radius and the strength. And what I also like is to, yeah, I, I personally I'm doing it right now with a mouse. I don't have my tablet here because I'm working from somewhere else. But uh, if you have a tablet, please do it with a tablet. But you can do it here and you can go to stroke and you can do smooth stroke. So what this essentially does, it, it smooths a stroke. So you can see that this little red line that goes after my, um, like after my cursor, this just makes my uh, strokes way more smooth, as you can see. So if we're gonna look at some of our reference pictures, we can see that yeah, we want to create this straight line in this, uh, like in this particular case, it's a straight line. There are multiple uh, kinds of them. Like some have a little bit of a squiggly line, but let's go for the straight line we have right now. You just want to have this little seam, which you can see, and this just, um, yeah, seams those two parts together, right? So that is the first thing that we're gonna do. And if you don't have enough uh, detail and you can kind of see what's happening here, you can always go up in your multi resolution, right? Just put the subdivisions a little bit higher. And if I paint on here, well, if I, if I sculpt on here, let's say, then you can see that we have this nice line. So with draw sharp, if you just normally click, it goes inside. So it essentially subtracts, but you can also add it. You can do it here direction, you, but you can also click on control. Control also works. It's just the same. So you want a line and don't be too afraid to make it like if it's not all the way straight. I don't really mind. So if you look here, you can see that it's a bit changed, but now you can do X, Y, you can change your mirrors here, right? So whatever we do on the X axis also happens on the Y and uh, yeah, so you can change it here. So uh, this is essentially our new mirror mode. So make sure the radius is nice and small. It's just a little line that we have. Uh, you can put the strength even up. If you don't get the result you want, you can always go up in multi resolutions, okay? So if you have something that you like, you can just go over with other brushes, right? To fix these little bits here that we have. They're not that hard to fix. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to create, uh, also do this in the inside, by the way. But the next thing that we want to do is we want to create these crevices in here. So these are more of uh, kind of folds that we have. Uh, where can we see them better? I guess we can see them here. So uh, yeah, we need to create those. And the way that we do that is just we get a, I personally like to do it with a crease brush here. And what I do with this crease brush, I increase the radius a little bit. And at this point, I would get rid of uh, at least one of these axes. So we only have one or two. And then just play a little bit around with these values, okay? So you want the strength to be quite up and the radius doesn't have to be big. Um, the problem here that I have, I cannot change my size pressure or strength pressure. So if you're also working with a mouse, which I am right now, I would recommend you not going way too high with this. So maybe put the strength a bit lower and then going scrolling a little bit in and then just making it here a bit more tight, then go over it with a smooth brush and you can always tighten these edges. So if you want it, um, as you can see here, they always end up in a quite like narrow end, like a spinch together. We can get our pinch brush here. 
scale it a little bit up with the pinch and just pinch this a little bit together as you can see this will create more of those kind of lines okay so do not be afraid to first use a, a crease brush then I go over it with a like a little bit of a smaller crease brush so this inside here is uh, even deeper then go over it with a, a pinch brush to pinch those uh, points together so this just is gonna take a little while I will just uh, play this further and you will guys uh, yeah you guys can just see what I'm doing I will just speed it up and then when I'm done we're gonna talk about creating the normals Okay, so let's save it before we're gonna do anything with it. Um, okay, cool. So what I'd like to do now is we have our high poly. Okay, so we're gonna bake this, right? So keep in mind, um, you want to bake it quite low because the higher you do it, because it just takes super long for the cloth simulation to like simulate it. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put it at one for right now. And if you go into here, we can bake our stuff but in EV baking is not really uh, the best option so let's go to cycles and then we have bake here and we can bake from a multi-resolution so we just bake on normals 
what you need to do though is we need to get a shader editor here and give this a material so just do uh, I don't know pool float and also get an image texture in here color goes into the base color and we're gonna add a new texture so let's do let's do 2048 by 2048 doesn't matter too much and what will happen is when we go in here and UV editor we can select this untitled image texture and then let's bake it and here you can see that this is our bake very very cool so if we save this image so uh, save as and just save it as uh, normal normal map something like that save as image we have our normal map here this normal map goes of course into the normal right so it goes into here but you can see that the color is has a, a yellow dot and the normal has a purple dot this doesn't really match up and you can also see that yeah it gives us quite a weird result so we're gonna add a normal map node in between here and this normal map is actually uh, the color space should be non-color and you can see the huge difference srgb it works like this and then non-color it just cleans it all up very very cool so here you can just uh, give it any color that you want so uh, yeah just play around with those values and the roughness i like it to be nice and uh, shiny and then of course we can add certain stuff but let's first get a plane up here and we're gonna move this so our torus falls on top very cool and what we want to do now is I'm essentially gonna give this a cloth simulation and go here we're gonna do the same the pressure and now I want to animate this pressure so before I animate it I think I'm gonna do it like the other way around so I'm gonna do it from full and then I'm gonna let's say deflate it um, the way I do it is just I start with pressure of um, let's try three first so um, three we're gonna insert a keyframe at frame one and at frame hundred we will do pressure of zero which is no pressure and then it should deflate in a normal way if you vacuum deflate it it, it gets a weird form and that I don't want that I just want to inflate it like it will in normal life so we can uh, put this end value also at hundred and what I also like to do is collision. I want it to self collide. So this way, if you self collide, then it doesn't go through each other. Um, let's play. Let's play it for a bit. You can see that this, yeah, actually goes better than I thought. We of course need to give this plane also a collision, and then go into here, into our torus again. And let's go to the cache and we can bake this so also put this end to 100 we don't need to bake it all the way to 250 and let's just bake it for right now okay so as you can see is kind of it does something weird here they're still working on uh, this uh, blender version right so that could be it and uh, otherwise I'm just I might just render this little part or I play a little bit around with these values like the pressure value that we have so what, what I will do now, I will just render these frames out and then just play it backwards. So we have it inflating from another point. So you can, um, yeah, this is kind of the technique that I use. And the fun thing is that our normal map will just stay there, right? So even in our, uh, like when it's all the way flat, we have this line, which is the normal map that we just made. We baked it in there. And then to this point, it will always have those nice sculpted details on there. See, so it can go from Wherever you want, those sculpted details will stay in there wherever uh, yeah, our simulation is. Very, very cool. So you can just add stuff on top of this. So uh, I might add like a, a palm tree or you can uh, make this a, a duck, right? Like put a duck head on here and those uh, little side pieces. What I do uh, recommend is keeping this as uh, one piece. So if you add something on top, I would personally make sure it is in the same model itself. So that is how we do this. I hope you guys learned a lot and yeah. Please subscribe, whatever, look at my website, I got cool and free stuff also there for you guys.